Hi everybody, welcome to uh, Storytime with Jesus. Uh, just before we start, let's have a word of prayer. So let's close our eyes. Dear God, thank you so much for today, and uh, we thank you for the story you're going to give us today. Uh, we pray that we have uh, ears to listen and we'll remember it. Uh, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so um, let's just start with a bit of a question today. Um, have somebody been really mean to you? And how did that make you feel? Did they maybe uh, break your toy, you know, break your Lego pieces, you know, for no reason? Right? So, and what if you had the chance to hurt that person back? Right? To um, break his toy or something? Take revenge. Would you do that? Did you ever do that? What was? What, did you have any? So, what, what did you do? What would you usually do? All right. So sometimes people are mean to us. You know, we meet people who are not very nice to us. Sometimes they do little things to make us angry. Sometimes they can do really mean things. They can actually hurt us. Did you know that David in the Bible was in a similar situation? That somebody was really mean to him. So remember, King Saul was very jealous of young David, and he was being really mean to him. So David uh, beat Goliath, and he was the hero. And he was a nobody; he was a little boy. But because he was a hero, he he moved into the into the king's palace. He became friends with the King Saul, and, the, and King Saul liked him very much at the beginning. But then after a while, he noticed all the people of the country start loving David more than the king. So he got jealous, and then he thought, what if David would be made king over me? So he feels very scared, he feel, feels nervous, very nervous, he wants to kill David. So Saul has gone very crazy. Um, so let's look at the story of how David treated his enemy. So his enemy in this case is King Saul. And this comes from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 24. So David is on the run from King Saul. King Saul wants to find David and kill him because he thinks David is wants to take his throne, wants to be king over him. But that's not the case. And David didn't want to f fight the king. So he just kept running and running. And at this point, he's actually been running for a while. Um, and he has some fo soldiers that followed him. So they are um, at a place called Adullam, and some messenger will report to King Saul and tell him where David is. So King Saul's King Saul knows where to look. So they've told King Saul uh, David is at Adullam. So King Saul thought, okay, well, he's in the city, so we're gonna trap him there and we'll get him. So they traveled. Uh, so they started from uh, they 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 went to Adullam. But because David always prayed to God, and he and God told him where to go, where to run, so King Saul wouldn't catch up to him. David moved on from Adullam to Kela, where he fought some Philistines. And he also moved along further because he knew God told him the people at. Kayla, they wouldn't protect him. They wouldn't protect David. So David had to keep moving uh, to the other dots, uh, Ziph, and later on Horish. So he was, he was, he just kept on running and kept on moving. And when he was at Horish, uh, one of his best friends, uh, Jonathan, who is the son 
of King Saul went to meet him and say hello to him without telling the king, because King Saul was very angry that his son Jonathan is very good friends with David. But he was, and he wanted to help David and and make sure he's okay. So he met up with David at Horish, and said, "Don't worry, David. My father is not gonna lay a finger on you. He's not gonna hurt you, and you will be king one day. Just, just, just keep yourself safe, and all this will be over very soon. And it's very good to see you, brother." And David was very, very happy to see his best friend as well. Well, you take care as well, Jonathan. I'll see you soon. So it was nice to see some French friends' faces because he's been alone and running away for for so long.、Uh, and the people at Zilf, Zif, they called the the Zifites,、um, reported again to. King Saul, where David was, so they told told the king David is at Horish, as in to help the king find David because David wasn't the king, and Saul was a powerful king. So these little cities they want to appease the king,、uh, as to not have the king be angry at them and become their enemy. So they will they will try to help the king to find. To do whatever king the king wants to do, and in this case, Saul wants to find David. And 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 Saul said, "Good. Keep an eye on David, because I'm gonna get him." And at that point,、uh, some Philistines went to attack Saul, Saul's、uh, palace, Saul's home. So he had to turn back to fight them. And then, after he fought off the Philistines, he took three thousand men and continued back to、uh, finding where David was. And by this point, David has moved further along to the place called En Gedi, close to the Dead Sea. But it's a very big desert area there, and there were many caves. So, so David stayed at En Gedi for a while, and then they found out. Saul's army would came back for them, and they thought, "Okay, oh no, we gotta run." <coughs> Excuse me. And they were getting so close. The army is is rushing around to the to the corner、uh, on the top right.、Uh, they had a lot of people, three thousand people, and David only had well, a couple hundred men at most. So they were really just running, and because the area. Is full of caves, so David was able to find places that he could hide from Saul. But the funny thing is, it just so happens that、um, Saul had to had to use the toilet. He has to do a pee, and he went into the cave, the very cave that David and his soldiers were hiding in. Right, so he went into this cave to relieve himself, and then David and soldiers saw. Hey, that's wait, that's that's Saul. And then David's soldier told David, David, this I think this is the day that the Lord is has given your enemy into your hand. So what that means is this is the day. This is your opportunity. To to kill your enemy, so you can you can stop running. Okay, this is the day where you will you will stop running around from him. That you can beat your enemy, and this is your chance to kill kill Saul. Once he's dead, you'll be free. You can go home. Okay, so David, do it, do it, kill Saul. And David thought,、um, okay, but then. He has some other ideas. So David took a little sword, and he snuck up on King Saul without him knowing. And then he he didn't kill King Saul. He didn't do it. He、um, 
just cut off a piece of his cape, of his cloak. And then he moved back. And his soldiers thought that, uh, saw that and, and thought, What, David, what are you doing? Kill him! Why did you just cut off his clothes? Don't you want to kill your enemy so he can be free? And some soldier even tried to kill Saul, but David grabbed him. No, no, no. Don't do that. Uh, because, and the David told him, the Lord has forbid, the Lord won't allow me or anybody to lay a finger, to harm, to kill the king, because King Saul is the king that God has chosen. And I don't have the right to, to remove him as the king. I don't have the right to kill him. Right? So he, he, he respected Saul. So when, uh, when, when Saul was done with his with his, with his relief, he went out of the cave. When he was far enough away, David came out of the cave and revealed himself to Paul. And he shouted, King Saul, my lord, the king. And he, he actually bowed down on the ground to show his respect for, king, for the king, even though the king has been trying to kill him for so long. And king, and king Saul looked back, what? And, 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 and David got up and, and held up that piece of garment, a piece of cape that he, he, he cut off from, from the king and told him, This is the day God has given me into my hand, but I did not kill you, I did not harm you, because you, because you are God's anointed king, you are God's chosen king. You have wronged me. You, you've tried to kill me the whole time, but I'm not, I'm not touching you because I'm, let God be the judge between you and I. Okay, may he deliver me from your hand. And then the, the king saw was really moved in his heart. He couldn't understand how can his enemy how can somebody who knows he's trying to kill not kill him back? How can he? How can David let him go and treat his uh, treat him this way? And he was really moved that he actually cried. He actually cried, "David, is that you?" And David has has grown a little bit older. He's got a beard. He almost couldn't recognize him a little bit. But then he realized. David, it is you, and you are so kind. You are a righteous person. You are doing the right thing. You are in the right, and I am in the wrong. This is when the king saw, uh, realized what he was doing was really bad, and he was, he was doing bad things to a good person, which was David. Uh, and and you ha and he told David, you have treated me well. Because the God has given me into your hand, but you you didn't kill me. So he met up with David. He said, Now I know, you are the one that's going to be king, after me. So, he was an enemy of David for a very long time. But from that day, um, he felt. He felt differently about David. He's not—he's not his enemy anymore. He's not trying to kill David anymore. And he's, um, they, 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 these two people have reconciled. They have become friends again, and it's for that day. And he asked David to not kill my children, okay? Because uh, usually, new king, the new person who becomes king, always murders. The family of the previous king, you know, that's just the way how kingdoms work. But David says, "Okay, I promise, I'm not gonna kill any of your family." And then they went home in peace in that day. So we can see that David's friends wanted David to kill, but kill Saul. But David trusts God to deal with Paul, 
they would forgive, forgave Saul for, for, for the whole time that he tried to kill him because David didn't want to dishonor God. And he forgave Saul. And he, he fought Saul's meanness. Saul was very mean with kindness. He didn't repay meanness with meanness. He didn't take revenge on Saul. But he was being very kind to Saul. Uh, this is a very good Bible verse from the book of Romans, chapter 12. It says, Dear friends, don't try to get even. Don't take revenge. Let God take revenge. Let God decide whether there should be revenge or not. It's not up to us to take revenge on anybody, whether they say it or did something wrong to us. So next time when somebody does something mean to you, what do you do? Right? Well, the three things that we should remember. First is have some self-control. Right? Don't let the anger drive you crazy. Number two is forgive that person because Jesus forgave people. He forgave us. So why, why don't we forgive other people? And number three, be kind to that person instead, like David did. He was kind to the person who was mean to him. So this is today's lesson. And let's do the memory verse. That's a very simple one. Let's just read it. Be patient and trust the Lord. Be patient and trust the Lord. It's from the book of Psalm, chapter 37, seven, verse 7, A. Okay, be patient and trust the Lord. Let's memorize it. Be patient and trust the Lord. Psalm 37, verse 7, 8. Okay, so this is it for the lesson. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Remember, don't pay repay, uh, in meanness with meanness. Don't take revenge. Forgive and be kind. Okay, I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.